video games Ooh. are for nerds. Aww. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. That's why you're listening to The Week in Gaming, the only gaming podcast that breaks down the last seven days and tears games apart from the inside. Ugh. So forget your worries, open your ears, and join Simon Miller and a co-host for the entertainment chatter you need. Also, screw Dark Souls. Hello and welcome to The Week in Gaming with me, Simon Miller. A video game podcast doesn't really take video games too seriously, which I imagine is a terrible thing to say at the start of a video game podcast, because that may make loads of people tune out. But hey, what are you going to do? You may as well be honest with yourself, and you've got to be honest with others. But indeed, my name is Simon Miller, and I'm about to chat to you for a while about video games. We did have my man Sam Bishop on last week, and hopefully we'll have another guest on soon. But for now, you're just going to get my loving tones. And as always... I want to thank everybody who uh, donated or put some money in the Patreon pot, patreon.com for slash Simon316 this week. Not only did you make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, but you are the reason I'm able to do this podcast and able to keep this madness going. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And if everybody could go and throw a dollar in that pot, hopefully we can make this madness explode before we go and walk across the plains of death. That just came out of my mouth. That's where my brain goes. Anyway, also if you're on iTunes, five star, give us a rating, give us a review, go share us. Why don't you go try share us on Reddit Gaming? Don't do that. Well, you can try and do that, but I imagine it gets kicked off straight away. Angry people. Angry, angry people on Reddit Gaming. Really mad. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Look, I'm so mad it made me cough from nowhere. The interesting thing, I mean, it's called The Week in Gaming. The podcast, obviously, as you know. Now, this week, nothing has happened. <laughs> like, no, it's like loot boxes came and they absolutely just destroyed the video games world for a while. Because, and I get it, we're at the end of the, end of the year. Like, I think the last big game that came out was probably Battlefront 2, hence why the the man uh, the, well, the controversy continues to go i mean as we go into like, you know this month or this week we've got resident evil revelations 1 and 2 on switch some game called little witch academia no idea what that was on ps4 siberia 2 on switch and then doom vr's next out with next week and then we've got steep road to the olympics and fallout 4 as well on vibe before the before 2017 comes to a close but you know we i think maybe the reason the Battlefront 2 controversy, aside from EA just pushing it too far to begin with and making a, a right mockery of the whole thing, is because it was like the perfect storm of stuff, right? It got to the quiet part of the year, they did something awful, and it just allowed people to focus on it more. I'm not saying that wouldn't have happened at any other time of uh, of the year, but, you know, if something like a, a Call of Duty or an Assassin's Creed had come along, I'd imagine that would have at least attracted a lot of the attention. But instead, that's what people are talking about. I mean, if you don't know and you aren't following it, the latest update with it is is that a bunch of different countries, I think we've got Belgium, I think uh, UK said something about it, I think Hawaii got involved, who are now basically trying to, or at least hinting at the fact that potentially loot boxes are the equivalent to gambling, and maybe that's something that we need to look into. Now, whether or not that goes anywhere or not, you know, who, who's to say? It, it, it's it's completely different. I mean, the, 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 the line really is, is that, you know, the, well, I said the line, but the actual line is the line, quote unquote, the line between games and gambling is becoming increasingly blurred. Now, it's all well and good for someone to come out and say that. It's a whole other thing to, you know, actually delve into it and do the due diligence and the investigation and try and, you know, make stuff change. I mean, it's not really the same, but it almost is, you know, it ties into that are games too violent kind of thing. Now, it's different because gambling is a very specific thing. However, we've seen a lot of people arguing, you know, about violence in games for years, and it hasn't really changed anything. Now, the difference there, obviously, is that games should be able to be violent to, to a certain extent. Of course, they should, much like movies, books. We've all done that argument. And to come out and you know, pace games with a different brush to all that stuff is ridiculous. Whereas, you know, if you actually do come to the conclusion that a loot box is gambling and kids are doing it, well, then you're breaking the law. I mean, it's one thing for a parent to buy their kids GTA 5 and they shouldn't be doing that because it's an 18 rated game. It's a completely different thing for a kid isn't sneak. A parent isn't sneaking their their kid into um, into a into a casino. I think that's where things change. But I'm, I think it's a difficult thing. I mean, last week on the podcast, a lot of people were a bit surprised. I mean, I was just playing devil's advocate for for a lot of it. You know, again, loot boxes do come down. It is true. Like, loot boxes do come down to a business arrangement at the end of the day. They are bad practice, and they shouldn't 
be as dominant as they are. And I know the difference between something like Overwatch and Star Wars Battlefront 2 is that Overwatch is mostly cosmetic. But again, if we are... A lot of people seem to be making this argument that loot boxes are gambling, but saying, but it's okay in Overwatch. Well, no, that's not true. All right, so maybe the you know maybe it's the equivalent of not going to the big boy tables when you do go to a casino when you're playing poker where the you know the million dollars are, are being bet, but you're still going to the five pound tables. And either way, a kid cannot go to either of those tables. I think that's where the blurring of the line comes a little bit. Like it's either gambling, or it's not gambling. If it is gambling, it's gambling for everybody, whether or not it's for progression or things that you know, indirectly help the game, or you're just getting a new hat. I don't know. I don't know. We, I, don't, I played Overwatch once, and I thought it was mediocre at best. <laughs> but, um, and I think that that's the issue here, is that it's difficult to, to decide who comes up with that with that gambit. I mean, if you're out there right now, and you didn't appreciate what they did in Battlefront 2, but you don't mind Overwatch, if a ruling comes in that wipes out all these loot boxes, how is that going to make you feel about what you do in Overwatch? I don't know, maybe you love them. I mean, the weird thing is, is that as far as I can tell, and there's, there's so many different you know lanes and wires to all of this, CSI Go, or CSI Go, CS, yeah, that, that TV show, CS Go has been doing this for, for, for close to 10 years or something. I know we had that whole controversy with, what's his name? more on face and bumblehead well their names total syndicate and t martin and that i mean that was bad there's no two ways about it. don't get me wrong that makes me feel like i don't think loot boxes are bad i do think loot boxes are bad but i do think there's this weird line in the sand being drawn here where you can't really stand on both sides it either is a problem or it isn't a problem and i understand that it's obviously not going to be as bad when you are just talking about cosmetics which don't really affect your your interaction or your progression through the game but I think we're past that now, and I think we're coming actually into what is a loot box and what does a loot box mean. Getting a bit existential with all of this. And I don't really know what the answer is. I mean, I guess I have never really played a game with loot boxes. It, probably I've played games that have them in them, but I've never really embraced them. Maybe I need to do a big study myself and sit down and see. Maybe they are addictive. Maybe I will, you know, start buying into, you know, you know how it works. I mean, again, people are probably going to roll their eyes and go, Miller, you're well off the plot here, but... And I probably am to a certain extent, but how does that all tie into FIFA Ultimate Team and the way you unwrap cards? I mean, I see kids doing that, and that seems like a that seems like the same thing to me. But I brought that up with someone the other day, and they were like, "You fucking don't know what you're talking about." I was like, "Sure, it's the same process. Okay, they're called magic cards or whatever, but it's still it's still the same thing." So how does that change that? I know that's EA again, and I also know that you know after we did we, we mentioned this last week, you know. Um, EA absolutely did change their need for speed progression very quietly as well. So, you know, maybe they've learned from it. But it, it depends how far this goes up the chain. And deep down, I don't actually think it will go that far. Because I think deep down, people just don't care. I mean, talking about sort of governments and, and things like that. I just always find those things eventually just vanish into the ether as other things come and just, and just take over. But it's a very interesting situation. And, you know, the, the fact that this would have all have been avoided, and maybe it's actually good that this has happened, but it all would have been avoided if EA had just stuck to what everybody else was doing. But they poked the bear. You know, they, they went one step too far, and the result has been this absolute outcry that may even bring the whole system down. And then you're going to feel pretty good, aren't you? Then you're going to feel absolutely awesome because you're going to be sat there going, man, I use social media to bring down the corrupt EA. You feel great. So you can look forward to that potentially and again that has just absolutely dominated games for the last when did battlefront come out i've got it up here it came out on the 17th so the week before that so literally for like three weeks the headlines have all been about yeah about battlefront 2 and i think i don't i'm gonna look now actually i meant to look up sales i don't know if we got any update with sales i know people said it was disappointing last week but i don't know if we if we got uh any update with that kind of stuff i mean again we've got this whole story about physical sales being down 60 percent where that heads off, I don't know. And there's another story here that apparently meant that the even the November 24th Black Friday sales didn't help particularly either. And I tell you this as well. If Disney and Lucas have got involved, you know, it's all well and good saying that EA are the big boys of the video game industry, which they absolutely are, and they can throw their weight around. But, you know, with that said, you don't fuck with Disney. <laughs> you don't fuck with that mouse. That mouse will always, always win. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I've, I, again, if I'm, if, I'm, um, if I'm Disney, I'm now going to be a bit like, well, do I even want to keep this license with these people? Because we had the, you know, we had the Visceral Games uh, development, uh, development project that was cancelled when they closed them down. So that's an absolute bust. It's a waste of our money. And now, we're, you know, now we've, we've got this whole hoopla 
with Battlefront 2, which kind of suggests, I mean, what what do they do with Battlefront 3 now, as and when that comes comes to pass? Do you, do you continue to, to give it to EA? I mean, potentially you don't. Potentially you think, well, this has been an absolute cluster. It's a bad idea. I think it's time, you know, we came up we came up with a new idea. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm sure if you have been covering, you know, anything online when it <laughs> when it comes to video games, you'll notice that there is just report and report and report are, are on loot boxes. I don't think it's going to go any any way time soon. I'm sure it will die now, die now for a few weeks, and then we'll get to 2018 and it will kick off again. But you know, make sure. Let me know what you think about the loot boxes thing at the moment. Maybe you're someone out there that actually likes loot boxes and you're using them in Star Wars Battlefront right now and you think they're wonderful. And you know what? If that's the case, good for you. I mean, no one else is going to agree with you and you're probably going to be killed. But other than that, good for you. The other story that caught my eye this week as I was just perusing stuff was that, again, it kind of ties into sales figures. There was a rumor, well, rumor, somewhat substantiated report that the, the last Day X game had not sailed well at all. Now, that doesn't really surprise me because when I played it, I did feel like, I felt like it was a bit uninspired. I thought, I always get confused which one, it was just Human Revolution and Mankind Divided. I think Human Re- Revolution was the first one, but I get them both both, both confused. But I remember playing Human Revolution and thinking it was good, but it, I, it couldn't really, it didn't hold my attention for as long as I was hoping it was going to. I kind of got to about halfway through and I really enjoyed the way it was put together and the and the progression, but eventually, I was like, I'm just done with this, and I did. I just stopped. I just stopped for whatever reason. I I just didn't want to. I didn't want to con- continue on with it anymore. And I kind of feel that when Mankind Divided came out, that's how I say this. But that's why I, I fell by the wayside with it because I was like, this feels exactly the same. And again, this could be on me. It's kind of like my my opinion of Bethesda games. I love Bethesda games, but I put so much time into Oblivion and Fallout Three that when Skyrim. And, um, what would you call it? Fallout 4. Well, I can't remember that. It's easy in Skyrim. Fallout 4 came out. I didn't think I could play it simply because I would put. I, I was too bored of that Bethesda template. Now, that's on me. People love that Bethesda template. I mean, obviously, in my little world, would I love them to change, you know, change up? Of course I would, because then it's going to feel fresh again. However, you know, in my, in my world, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I still understood. I still understood why people loved it. You know, Skyrim now has got about 7 million different... Uh, versions. I mean, it came out on the Switch last week. Yeah, it was the same day as Battlefront 2, so a couple of weeks ago. And that is an amazing game to have on your Switch. And the guy's comment I read out last week when he said he didn't think portability was uh, was a balance actually got in touch. I was only winding you up, dude. It was, nothing I ever say is serious. I think, you know, if you don't, you don't see that, that's absolutely cool. But, you know, my point was just that I do think that, you know, having that portability is incredible. I really do. I just... It, it, like I said, that's why I bought FIFA for it. Because I was like, sweet, I can now play FIFA on the go. As opposed to not being able to play FIFA on the go. And that just sounded like a great idea. So, I don't know, this is a massive tangent. But anyway, my, <laughs> my point being is that it did seem like Deus Ex had, for me anyway, run its course. And it needed to do something different. And given that it got you know low, sell, low sales, you kind of thought the Square Enix would be like, okay, well, we'll, we'll put it on the back burner for now. However, they came out and said that, you know, it's not dead. It will come back at some point. It just has to wait its turn, which is a bit of a weird thing to say, like you're in McDonald's or something. The question is, though, I mean, if you are going to bring it back, what do you do to it? Because if it didn't sell well, which I do not believe it did, there is no point just releasing the same game again because that's pretty much what you did this time, and it didn't work. And I know they made a lot of mistakes along the way. Like A lot of people had the problem with the story, and there was all that nonsense with the DLC or whatever it was. Um, there was a big pre-order program which did brick the game a little bit. I know people didn't like that. So you'd have to come up with, to me anyway, I think if you're going to bring back Deus Ex, it's really, really important that we come up with something new. Maybe, that's why I brought up the Bethesda stuff. I think Bethesda could probably get away with bringing out, I guess, Elder Scrolls 6 would be next. I think they could probably get away with with releasing Elder Scrolls 6 and kind of doing the same thing. Maybe they tie it deeper into VR. So, you know, that, that will blow things off. On that note, actually, like, the PlayStation VR headset sold more with their VR deals than they had in the last 18 months or something, 18 months, eight months or something stupid like that. So maybe this is finally the, the, the connection that we need with VR. I'm mean, such a big fan of VR and I just don't sell at all. So it's like, what is the point? What is the point of doing anything for them? But I still utterly believe that there is a market there and that we'd be able to do something with it. I'd have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, while I think Bethesda could do that, I just don't think Deus Ex can just release another game like that again. I just don't think it would work. I just don't think it would work, and I think it would be 
I don't know. I mean, I just don't think it's going to grab people's attentions. That's my gut. That's my gut when it comes to Deus Ex. In many ways, I do think it's run a course. Like, I find it incredible that you know Square were happy to let Hitman walk away. And Hitman, to me, and again, I don't know what the sales figures were between the two, but Hitman, to me, felt like a game that managed to refine itself and was building again. Maybe the episode at Nature didn't work so well, but it felt fresh and it felt exciting, whereas you know, Deus Ex has gone the other way. And Square Enix certainly don't seem like they're, they're willing to, to throw that to throw out that out of the way like they did with Hitman. But it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, they are a very, very creative studio, Square Enix Montreal. And I met them a couple of times. They're smart dudes. You know, they're, they're really, really smart dudes. So maybe they're working on something else. Maybe they do something else. Aren't they on the Justice League game? Are they doing a Justice... Is it Justice League? Oh, I've got to type that in now as well. Square Enix... I swear they're doing Justice League. Well, maybe you don't want to do a Justice League game after the... What do you call it? The, the film came out. Film apparently is not doing well at all. So I have to see. No, they're doing Avengers, aren't they? Not Justice League. So they've smashed it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got the Avengers project. Not, they got the good one, not the bad one. I kind of want to use it. Can we talk about the Justice League film? Is that going to annoy people? Maybe we'll just do a little bit. And if you get mad, you get mad. So I saw the Justice League movie and I'm kind of itching to see it again. So I don't know what that says about me. And I think that some of the shots they do of Batman himself look awesome. Like, when the film starts with Batman, it's almost like they ripped him, they ripped pages out of a comic book, like the way it's shot, and they make Batman look huge. However, <laughs> outside of that, the film is, I, I, I do, th it, it's, 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 it's entertaining to a certain degree, absolutely. I certainly did enjoy it, but at the same time, I, don't, I won't give anything away too much, because it's not like a proper review or anything like that. But at the same time, it was... It jumps around the place a lot. It does feel like it was made by about 82 million people, which I believe it was. I know there was, you know, the tragedy that happened with um, Zack Schneider's daughter. But even with that, it still feels like, yeah, it just feels crazy and all over the place. The way they introduce all the superheroes is really like something you do in GCSE. There's no consistency or just smoothness to it whatsoever. It's like it's the same way as they did it in Suicide Squad. They really don't know how to introduce characters in DC movies. But I did think each character was well realized. I'm never going to entirely like Ben Affleck as Batman because it was just the wrong choice. But, you know, even Aquaman came across as quite good. I and mean, you know Wonder Woman is still the is still the best. But I, I won't I won't hold on that too long. But I am going to go see it again. So it must have done something right, although maybe that falls more on my on my stupid head than anybody else's. But it yeah. An interesting video game, I think we'll call it more than... A video game? An interesting movie, I think we'll call it more than anything else. But, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with the DC verse, or whatever they're calling it. It certainly sounds like they are struggling, and they're not keeping up with the Avengers at all, and eventually, or the, the, the Marvel stuff at all. So eventually, you know, you've got you to gotta, you gotta weigh that up. You've got to think about it and go, okay, well, what do we do now? Because if it's not working, it's not working. If all the, you know, if you're big, really, I mean, Justice League should have smashed them all, right? Should have smashed them all. If they don't smash them all, something you've got to look at, something you've got to think about. What I did want to touch upon, but before we move, uh, before we move away from this episode, because uh, we are going back to when well, I got someone else on, I do longer. But you know, the original uh, plan for all of these was just meant to be like thirty-minute bursts of video game news. Obviously, Doom came out on the Nintendo Switch a couple of weeks ago, and I've been playing that, and it utterly reminded me what a great video game Doom is. I mean, it's just it's it's just excellent like it, it really is one of the best shooters of the last i would say 10 years and it's incredible because it does that by relying on you know you don't do much in doom right you don't do much in doom there's that one idea and it just repeats that idea sort of you know throughout its 8 to 10 hour running time however long it lasts but the fact that that never gets boring and the fact that it's you know interesting all the time. you get into such a rhythm with it. It does become like a rhythm action game. You like you know you 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 hurt somebody enough where you can run in and do the uh, the gore gore attacks, whatever the hell they're called. And they're so cool. And there's such a like crunch and a satisfying feeling to it that you do you know you do want to do it over and over and over again. And you do start running through these levels as if you are speed running to a certain degree, taking you know taking these enemies out and the way it looks and the music and you know how over the top the enemies are and how much it captures the original idea of what Doom was. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Like the best thing that I don't hear anybody talk about now is the way it takes the piss out of its own cutscenes. Like it tells you stories and eventually you know Doom guy would just push that away, just push it away. Like I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to you. I just want to go shoot things. And I think that it really you know for a game that was so stripped back. I just think I think it just did a really, really good job in 
you know, making sure you were having fun, making sure that its systems all worked, making sure that shooting people in the face was really enjoyable. You know, it didn't. It never tried to to outlive it. Well, not outlive its welcome, but it never tried to do too much. And I think that's a wonderful thing in the world of 2017 because that does feel like what games want to do the most, right? That's all they want to do. They just want to throw everything in there. And admittedly, that did mean that when it came to the multiplayer, it fell down a bit, which is a contradiction in terms when it comes to Doom. Like Doom, and well, id games anyway, you know, they're the kings of multiplayer. So that what you that's what you'd expect. But I think the single player is so good. And again, classic, you know, being able to play it on the go and, you know, it just it makes mince meat out of any kind of commute or train journeys you've got to do because it's so much fun. But, you know, being able to to play a game that I think is twofold, really. A, the game is still really good. It came out, what, two years ago, I think now. And I still think, obviously, it still holds up. Nothing's changed. But I really do think it deserves more more praise thrown in its direction just because how good it how good it is. But also, you know, the fact Again, the fact that all these games are coming to Switch after the, you know, the embarrassment of the Wii U, that's the embarrassment, but after just the, you know, the, the lukewarm reception to the Wii U and the fact that the Wii didn't really get those kinds of games. I mean, it didn't really matter because the Wii sold so much. Who gave a crap what was on it? But, it, it, you know, it does. I was getting a bit bored of the Xbox One and PS4 just because it felt like, well, I've got two of the same machine. That's fine to a certain degree, but I certainly don't feel like we're living in a world where the exclusive means anything anymore. I mean, it literally is now, you just have to be a massive nerd if you're going to go argue about, you know, oh, those PS4 exclusives, but no, I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't personally don't think anybody cares. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what my gut feeling says to me. Um, but the best thing about the Switch is that you can just release the same games on it. Like, I mean, you really, really can't, and that's okay. Like, that's not a problem, because it has this huge plus point, and that plus point you know, makes all these games good again. Like, I never go black and play games. I started Doom, I did, think, I played Doom like 1.8 times. You know, I started, I started throwing it again and played sort of the first couple of hours just because I thought it would be good. But I would, you know, the, knowing that it was coming out on the Switch was enough for me to go, you know what? I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it again. Like, you know, it's something that I can do. Like I say, I can do it on the train. I can do it on my Switch. It's very accessible, and I know I'm going to enjoy it. And also, because it is so stripped back, and because I know it doesn't matter if all of a sudden my gaming time is interrupted, it doesn't matter where I stop. It's not like I have to be super invested in this. I just have to get a gun and walk around and shoot everybody in the face. And so I just... It really is one of those video games that... I know it had a lot of praise at the time, and I certainly didn't hear a lot of negativity about it at the time. However... I do think it deserves more praise. I genuinely think it's it's an absolutely wonderful, fascinating, just just amazing video game to the point I can't even get my words out. And I you know I think it deserves to be to have been talked about far more. Even today, I think when the Switch version came out, there should have been a lot more shouting and hooing and haring. And I actually think it, well, it's not a shame. I don't care. I don't really. Care. It's just a game. It's an animal object. It can't hurt its feelings. People that do that are weird. <laughs> but. I, I don't know. I just think there's something special about it. I, just, I really, really do think that it's, yeah, it's, it's just something that, um, that was my computer going off. That was good. It's, it, it's just something about it that, yeah, I, I, I just I remembered completely why I enjoyed it so much to begin with. And, you know, that was, being able to play, I did, that's, that's why I love the Switch so much. It's like a fanboy, like a massive nerd. But that is why I love the Switch so much, simply because, it it allows you to go back and play those games that beforehand I don't think I would have gone back and played. Maybe I could do that with Skyrim. Maybe that's what I could do, going back to what we were talking about earlier. Maybe I could actually sit down with Skyrim now and enjoy it more because it has been a long time and because I can play it on my Switch. I genuinely think the the portability of that thing makes everything... In fact, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it just to see if having that Bethesda you know, template on the road is enough for me to, to you know, forget that I was getting well bored of it. <laughs> and I, could be, I could be utterly, utterly wrong, but we'll see. The other thing I do want to get into this week is I finally picked up a copy of, of Call of Duty, which is another game which has been surprisingly quiet. I mean, maybe I just follow the right people, and, um, you know, I, but I just haven't seen anybody talking about it, especially the multiplayer. Now, again, you can't say anything until, you know, sales figures come out, because every year it's doom and, it's doom and gloom for... For, for, for Call of Duty until all of a sudden the sell figures come out. It's like, oh, I still wipe the floor with everything. And I'm sure Activision is still super happy about all of this. But, you know, it's it's something that I thought I would be 
far more eager to play, given that I am a World War II enthusiast, if you don't know, I'm well into that shit, and all my favourite Call of Duties, and really when I started to fall away from the Call of Duty franchise, is when I started to get that inkling, you know, I want to go back to Call of Duty, I want to go back to World War II now. I didn't actually think, um, I didn't actually think they'd do it. I thought that, I really thought they were past it, and you know, the, uh, the, the modern warfare stuff would go on for a long time. But obviously Battlefield came out of Battlefield 1, and that, it did so well. I think you know it was um, it was it was a bit a bit of a risk from Dice as well because World War One is a lot harder to. Well, it sounds disrespectful, but still, it's what we're talking about here to turn into a video game than World War Two, just given the weaponry and and what combat was like. So that was the impetus for someone to go, okay, well, let's try it with with Call of Duty uh, World at War, World War, sorry, whatever it's called, W two. And I thought I'd play it a lot sooner before this. We're almost a month away. But I finally did get a copy, so I, I, I want to get into that. But again, I am surprised that I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it now. And maybe that has the same every year. Maybe year in, year out, it does just dwindle away this quickly. But because now I'm more interested in it, because we're talking about World War II, I kind of noticed it more. But yeah, I'd like to know what other people are thinking about it as well. Like, you know, is it good? Is it bad? What, you know, what's, what, what's the deal with with Call of Duty this year because I really don't know I don't know what people are thinking about it I don't know if people are enjoying it I know that a lot of people are upset the campaign is only six hours but to me that sounds wonderful I just hope that it balances as well as Call of Duty Call of Duty 2 was my favourite I mean it, it certainly I'm sure if I went back to it's the context of the thing right it's one of the first games to have on my Xbox 360 and that's always going to help um, and it, you know maybe if I'd you know, played it later or whatever, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. But I still think that was, did a great way of letting you know about World War II, about these incredible battles that people took part in, while also making it a good video game. And that is, <laughs> that does sound disrespectful. I think actually when you take a step back, you start thinking to yourself, should we really, really be making, you know, <laughs> video games about World War, especially when it's got Nazi zombies in it? I mean, that does irk me a little bit. Not enough that I'm ever going to moan about it online. Like, I don't really care. But there is a part of me that is... Um, that finds it interesting that it's cool to have a game that Activision have outwardly come out and said, you know, this is meant, this is in a way there to teach, not to say teach kids, but is, is, is there in a way to educate people about World War II and let the younger generation that maybe not know about World War II do it? And then on the other side, we're doing Nazi zombies. <laughs> it's a strange. It's a strange mix, to say the least. Like, I don't necessarily... I mean, they've come out a lot and talked about it, and they see them as different modes. And again, it's not one of those things that I'm going to kick too much of a stink up on, because I just don't think... It, I just I think there's other problems in life, and I think if we all do that, we'd fall down a horrible hole that we'd never, we'd never get out of. Either way, I am going to play it, so I'll let you know what I think. That didn't come out on Switch, did it? <laughs> That's my thing now. I think that'd be awesome if it came out on Switch. Of course I would. I'm clearly just fanboying massively. Uh, massively over this but yeah going forward we do enter the quiet period of the year so this is now the time obviously where you want to go back and play the games that potentially you missed you know you want to you want to you want to check out i mean it's, it's, we talked about it last week but it's something like resident evil 7 that came out in january everybody's forgotten about that now because that's just what happens like you know we get into to the end of the year and it, all these sort of october november games take over everything even something like assassin's creed origin seems to have dropped off to me even super mario odyssey a lot of these games have come out, and I'm sure they've done well. And I'm sure they've, uh, I'm sure they've done really, really successful. But it's all gone very, very quiet, and I don't know whether it is because of loot boxes and everyone getting mad about that. I don't know. I don't know. Even Destiny Two. That's what I want to know about. I want everyone to drop me a line on Twitter about Destiny Two. I haven't played Destiny Two. I've still got this video I got edited, but that's never. Gonna, well, it will happen one day. But I want if you're a big Destiny fan, because all I keep hearing is that Destiny Two is a huge disappointment, and Destiny Two ruined my life, and Destiny Two was responsible for my divorce. There's a video in that. Destiny 2 was responsible for my divorce. Hmm. I'll write that down. <laughs> but, you know, that does seem to be like the, the big disappointment of the year. So I'll be, I'll be intrigued to, to see what people think. I've still been playing L.A. Noir on Switch this week as well. I love L.A. Noir. I don't understand what people's problems with it is. Let me know that as well. Let me know why people were upset about L.A. Noir, either when it came out or now. To me, it's just a really good adventure game with decent enough shooting. I'm not the greatest in the world, but it's fine. And it's all uh, and it's all situated around a great story, especially the homicide files and the homicide case and an awesome setting in the late 40s with some great twists and turns along the way and also ties into real-life cases that you may recognize. I really don't, I really don't see what all the, the upsettedness was about. And obviously, when we get to 2018 as well, we're getting Red Dead Redemption 2. 
And some people have told me a few things about Red Dead Redemption 2. And if they're all true, I don't know what they are, because people love to talk about nonsense all the time. It's it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that's not that's not a big surprise, really, is it? That's not going to surprise anybody. But it certainly does sound like it's going to be something special. That's all I'll say. I won't go into it. I won't go into it too much because, uh, well, I can't anyway. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, next week, though, I will also talk about. I'm actually going to an event tomorrow to play that Kingdom Under Fire game that's been coming out for about 722 years. So, you know, I'll let you know what that's all about. So that's something to look forward to. And I'm sure there'll be some other nonsense news that's broken. I don't know. Maybe but maybe in a week's time, loot boxes have been banned. And now all video games are only allowed to be 25 bucks. I don't know. Although, to be honest, Star Wars comes out soon. Like the movie. And everybody will probably love that. And then everybody will forget about Battlefront 2. And everybody will forget about video games in general. And people just talk about Star Wars until 2018. And that's when we'll start again. That's my gut anyway. But we'll have, to, we'll have to see what happens. But we are in that quiet period. There's no two ways about it. Like, you now kind of know, was 2018 a good year or was it a bad year? We'll get into that soon as well. Because technically, it was a bad year. There's a lot of controversy this year. A lot of upset people. Anyway, uh, this is just, um, like I say, going back to that original format of 30 minutes. If you would like to be on the Week in Gaming, you can visit patreon.com for Seth Simon 316. All the details are on there, and please do support as much as you can. This um, Somebody asked, this podcast will be at youtube.com forward slash the Miller Report rules. Just go there. Please give that a subscribe as well. The more subs we can get, the better, and that will be going up on Tuesday. And otherwise, just keep enjoying games. Ignore all the bullshit online. Ignore the Twitter idiots. Just sit down, smash out your game, and have a good time. Put a smile on your face, and show the world you don't give a damn.